Hey, do you recognize this bass riff? Of course you do. Why would you not? In today's video, I'm going to take a look at Paul McCartney, the bass player. And I might even throw in a little quiz at the end, see how many tunes you can identify just from the bass playing. Okay, I've put the bass guitar down, otherwise I'll be distracted playing. <laughs> now I want to take a look at Paul McCartney, the bass player. Now it is a subject close to my heart because when I started learning to play the guitar, 13, 14, I quickly moved to the bass. And I think for me, it's the bass in any song that I hear first before anything else. It's the groove that's laid down and also kind of the melody that's counter offset with the tune. So the bass is, is what I hear first. And when I first discovered the Beatles, I only associated Paul with the bass guitar. So the first time I saw him with a, an acoustic guitar or electric guitar, it, it was really strange to me. Now I've had quite a few bass players as inspiration as I've been kind of growing up. There was Sting, Graham Gouldman, Terry Utley, Peter Cetera, David Payton, and even Morris Gibb. So kind of all the players from the kind of music that I used to listen to when I was growing up. But I have to say that the number one inspiration was, and probably still is, Paul McCartney. I'm not listing those other bass players, you know, in kind of world ranking or anything, because I know there's loads of bass players out there. But for my young impressionable ears, you know, and the way the bassists brought about the melody in their playing, I rank them, they're really good. So what I'd like to do in this video is highlight some of McCartney's memorable bass lines from Beatles, Wings, and of course his solo career. And I might even throw in a little quiz at the end, a kind of a name that tune in one just by playing some bass riffs and seeing if you can identify the song so stay tuned later on in the video but before i take a dive into his bass playing let's find out why paul took up the bass in the first place you playing that bass again <laughs> now paul's father jim mccartney had his own jazz band in the 20s going into the 30s and they covered tunes of the day uh, but also performed original material. And one such song was Walking in the Park with Eloise, which Paul himself recorded in 1974 under the name The Country Hams. I can only get away with 10 seconds of that. The tune was later released on the 1982 CD Wings at the Speed of Sound as a bonus track credit was given to James McCartney as the um, you know the author of the song the writer of the song so when Paul was 14 his father bought him a trumpet because he was keen that Paul should follow his own interest in music dad bought me a trumpet but Paul soon realized he wouldn't be able to sing with a trumpet in his mouth but then I realized that um, I wasn't gonna be able to sing with this thing stuck in my mouth and so he sold the trumpet and he bought a guitar so I traded it in for a guitar which was a zenith. And then it was at home that Paul began to teach himself to play the guitar. And of course he would play the piano because Jim had a piano at home. He then joins the Quarrymen as the guitarist and he even attempted to play some solos. And as good as he was at playing lead, in those early days he would freeze on stage. And so he kind of resigned himself to the fate that he would just be the rhythm guitarist. And that's when George enters the scene. He was a bit better than any of us on guitar. So Paul would continue to play guitar with the Quarrymen, the Silver Beatles, with Johnny Gentle, link up here, and ultimately the Beatles, especially with their early stints in Hamburg. It's July 1961, and being the bass player of the band is suddenly thrust upon Paul. Stuart Sutcliffe decides he wants to leave the band and concentrate on his painting. And so suddenly the band are without a bass player. And at this time, the only option would be for John, George or Paul to take up the bass. It wouldn't be Ringo, right? No one else was going to play bass. I mean, John was not going to play bass. <laughs> and George was the lead guitarist. That left Paul, but he thought the bass wasn't glamorous enough. I wanted to play something glamorous. The bass wasn't glamorous. 
Paul asked Stu if he could borrow his Hofner president base as an interim loan until he could get his own. But being left-handed, he realised that it'd have to be played upside down. I wonder if he could have played it right-handed. I don't know. I've never seen a picture of Paul holding the president base, but if you have, let me know. In the meantime, here's one that I photoshopped just so that I could get it in my head to see, see what he looks like holding uh, uh, the president base. So this is where the Hofner 500 slash one is, comes into the scene. McCartney takes himself off to the um, Steinway Music House in Hamburg, just off the Reeperbahn area, Col Colonaden 29. And he found the guitars and the drums in a section of the store. And he said in his own words, I saw a bass guitar with a symmetrical body, that one there, and I thought that if I played it upside down, it wouldn't look stupid. And I think I read that he was looking at Fender Jazz or a Fender P bass, precision bass, but the Hofner was all that he could afford. So McCartney asked the shop assistant, Gunther Herber, about buying the bass. And during the discussion, Gunther realized that Paul McCartney was left-handed, so he offered to order a left-handed bass. And the sym symmetry of it is the scratch card and the buttons, obviously on the left, left hand side. Now, has there ever been a musician more closely associated with his instrument than Paul McCartney and his Hofner bass? Certainly we can think of other musicians and their associated instruments. So Jimi Hendrix with his Strat, left-handed, but plays a right-handed version and the headstock is kind of upside down. You've got Peter Green with his gold top Les Paul called Greeny. That's a close association. Eric Clapton, his association with Fender Stratocasters. Even Hank Marvin, Chris Rear and Mark Knopfler kind of linked with a red Fender Stratocaster. But when you see a picture of Paul McCartney with a bass, you're not at all surprised to see him holding the Hofner. It's almost as if he was born with it. And of course, <laughs> he's also linked with the Rickenbacker and Yamahas, but it's the trusty old stalwart, the Hofner, that probably adorned the walls of posters of teenagers in the 60s. So Paul becomes the bassist of the Beatles, but continues to play guitar and piano, God knows how many other instruments throughout his career. But he realised quickly what the advantages of being a bassist can be. I realised, wow, you can, you can really do a big thing with a bass. You can actually control the band with the bass. Now McCartney has said he's never once, not ever, composed a song with the bass guitar. He normally composes with piano or with um, acoustic guitar. But if we see the documentary in Get Back, we see him jamming on his, his Hofner bass. I think we could argue that actually Paul did compose Get Back using the bass guitar, albeit because it's a hollow bodied, almost acoustic, you can play bar chords on it and get away with strumming it like a guitar. And that's how Paul became the bassist in the Beatles. So what I want to do now is pick the bones out of a number of the tunes that McCartney's kind of associated he's contributed to or he's composed himself and see what his innate talent has actually contributed to those songs. When I think of them, I'm thinking Come Together, which I played at the beginning. Well, I think maybe what I'll do is play it and talk about it as I'm, as I'm um, explaining. It's just this thing that Paul has where it's almost like he, he can hear every single instrument that's going to be played in a song when he's either composing the song or he's, you know, asked to play. So if he's playing the bass part in a song, it's not going to be boom, 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 but it's actually going to be he's going to hear. Oh, <laughs> let me get the instrument. We'll have a look. So in this section, what I want to do quickly is look at three songs, Come Together, Something, and Dear Prudence, and just kind of examine Paul's bass playing in these songs. Now, these are three songs he didn't write, and I can almost imagine the other Beatles saying, hey, Paul, go away, you know, work something out. Just, just give us some 
bass. Maybe they didn't. Maybe it's a case of the collaboration of the four Beatles really just owning and knowing their parts in as much as something in the way she moves C, C major 7, C7, that's all George knew, but the rest of them just, you know, whether it was um, John on the organ, Paul on the bass, Ringo providing just really basic drums. They all just contribute to a song. And, and you know, um, Harrison wrote the song. McCartney doesn't get any writing credits as a sort of co-writer of all those lovely bass riffs that are in there. It's just a common knowledge that they will all contribute to a song. So in Come Together, um, what I've got, I've got my door. I can't do the recording of the uh, screenshot because it conflicts with the audio in the Scarlet sound card thing I've got. And it just freezes up. So I'll just have to do some screenshots. So here you can see I've got um, a, a deconstructed waveforms for each of the tracks, Ringo's drums, Paul's bass, the solo guitar, the riff guitar and the vocals. And I've added a track myself so that I can record my bass. So if I just solo Ringo's drums, you'll hear this. If I solo Paul's bass, which I'm not going to play, but you'll hear this. If I solo the guitar solo, you hear this. If I solo the riff guitar, you hear this. And if I solo the um, vocals, you'll hear this. He wore no shoe shine, he got toe jam football. So let's have a look first. Because it's a 12 bar blues, it's just a. You think, well, what, what could the bass do? What could the, could he just do, 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 do. Could he give a working around the bass? But Paul does something completely different. He gives us a riff, not like the one I played in my, my own song, my own cover of it, and it was totally different, but let's not go there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is play the track through and say, this is what, you know, if, if Paul hadn't given his contribution, it could have sounded like this. So let's give it a shot, see if it can record. So with just a single, single notes playing over the verse, it could sound like this. And for some parts of the song, that's actually fine. There is the uh, the middle riff, which goes like this, and it's around the, the B, the A, and the G, and they're single notes, so that works. Come together, right now. And Paul plays that, he plays those single notes. And also at the end of the song, where it's just droning on and on in the key of D, it's single notes again, so Paul does that. But it's the fabulous little riff that we all know and love, the... which I played at the beginning of the video, <laughs> that Paul gives us throughout all the verses. <laughs> I'm sent with that. <laughs> Probably played it completely wrong because um, he, he plays with a plectrum, doesn't he? So what we've got here is Paul kind of laying down a lovely melodious bass hook which cements his part in the song let's have a look at dear prudence now in dear Pru prudence it's in the key of d and paul gives us this nice which i'll play along with in a minute but it could quite easily have just been a simple playing down the tone and the semitones, you know, to follow the guitars. Let's play it as if that's what was happening in the song. Single notes on the tones and the semitones. And I could imagine if 
George or John were playing the bass on the song. That's what they would have done, but no. Paul does this. <laughs> And it's all played on the, um, what is that? Is that the D string? It's just kind of root sliding up to the 12th and then the 10th and the 9th and the 7th. Just fabulous. I mean, the guy, the guy was gifted, wasn't he? And I think this is what happens when you spend your life as a professional musician. You really are eight hours a day, not eight days a week, but eight hours a day with your instrument. You, you're just going to flourish. You immerse yourself into it and you just, oh, music, songs, compositions, all that kind of thing. Who's got time to do that other than a professional musician, right? I might start a Patreon account and you can all fund me. I'll just concentrate on doing videos and music. Let's have a look at the song Something. Now with Something, Paul really gives us these lush hooks. And I would imagine that, you know, on things where he's going, that could potentially have been a brass section. If, if the song had a brass section, you'd have had lovely sax or a trumpet section. But maybe it was a question of, well, we don't have that. Can you do something with the bass? You know, fill something in. And he does, he gives us all these lovely walky bits on the bass guitar. He's a good bass player, don't you think? So in this first section, he's doing a little climb. Something in the way she moves me. And he's bringing it up to the B from the G. And it's kind of, what would someone who's not Paul play? Would he just be playing single notes? Let's have a play with that and see what happens. Something in the way she woos me. Sim simple enough, right? But he tickles the strings. Something in the way she woos me. And then in this next section, it's just that I don't want to leave her now. I don't want to leave her now. And it just follows a semitone all the way down until it resolves. But Paul doesn't follow simple semitones. It would sound like this if he did. I don't want to leave her now. You know I believe in how. Simple, isn't it? Ding, do, 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 do. But no, he does this. I don't want to leave her now. You know I believe in how. <laughs> He's in a world of his own. He's playing this sort of... And, it, and, and it's, it's... Yes, George is singing, and the words are wonderful, and Frank Sinatra said, oh, the best Beatles song that Lennon McCartney ever wrote. <laughs> Well, why is that? That's because McCartney's putting all this stuff in. It, it makes it, it kind of makes it his song. <laughs> but it's not his song, it's George's. Right, let's look at this last part. I get so excited with music, I really do. It's the end of the song. Something in the way she moves. And the bass is doing the... I love this part, it sends me. What would a normal bass player do? <laughs> me? No. Something in the way she knows. The B, B, G, not Paul. He tickles the strings again. Something in the way she knows. <laughs> How to resolve from the octave C down to the root C. So. The guy is a natural, he really is. And I think that is the eight, eight days a week of playing your bass guitar, your piano. And when we saw him in the Get Back documentaries, I think I read or I heard, saw a video where he mentioned that he thought he was really bossy, you know, in the 
what, what was it, the original version, 1970, 71, whenever it was released. But in the get back, when he then saw it, he thought, well, no, I'm actually just trying to drive everybody and get them to work. You know, we're here to work. If, if you're doing eight days a week playing an instrument in a band, then you're working, right? Okay, that's that section out of the way. Let's have a little pop quiz. Okay, it's time for a little pop quiz. I should put the bins on. You're not going to hear anything. All you're going to hear is the bass guitar and I'll hear the music. See if you can name all of them or as many of them as you think you can. <laughs> Or as you know you can. Who am I to say? A mix of McCartney, Wings and of course the Beatles. Right, let's go. And there you have it. Did you get them all? <laughs> Not that difficult really, are they? I had a couple that I had trouble playing, but it's all in the um, it's all in the fun. So I hope you enjoyed that video. It's kind of a, a weird one, perhaps. Um, thumbs up, subscribe, all of that nonsense, and I will see you 
another video. Thanks for watching. Bearing with. Bye for now.